Okay. All right, let's get going. Recording now. All right, hello, kings and queens. Welcome to the Affirmations of Excellence uh, podcast, the video edition of season two. I'm your guide, Ariel Ellis. And in this uh, series uh, of the new season is a new installment I'm calling Seasons and Shifts. This series features some of the leading voices in spiritual development, personal development, and personal growth, professional growth, et cetera. We all know that when one season is up and another one begins, things can get uncertain. Life can get uncertain. And when a shift comes about, we have to be equipped to navigate the change. So the guests that I have on this series share their insights on important topics that really position us to expect the extraordinary in a new season and pursue all of the excellence that's waiting for us. My guest today is Anthony O'Neill. Since 2003, Anthony has helped thousands of people make really important and smart decisions about their money, their relationships, and education. He is a number one national bestseller, best-selling author of de de debt degree. Let me let me start off with that debt-free degree. I like that. I should have known you about 10 years ago when I was getting a master's degree. A little bit more than 10 years ago. I should have known you when I was getting my master, my doctorate two years ago. Um, he's also a national best-selling author of the Graduate Survival Guide. He recently released Destroy Your Student Loan Debt. He travels all over the world spreading encouragement uh, to teens, young adults, millennials, et cetera, about starting their life off right, navigating different changes as it relates to money. Uh, he also works alongside the amazing Dave Ramsey and his team. So I'm so excited to have him here with us to talk about excellence in our finances, but specifically wealth and prosperity. Hello, Anthony. Ariel, man, thanks so much for having me on your podcast. I've been looking forward to this for the last couple of weeks. So yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Um, we're all kind of locked in, the majority of us are, hopefully, and we're being safe and we're quarantining and um, folks are trying to figure out how to maintain in this season and even how to thrive in this season. So as I develop the seasons and shifts series for the podcast, it was important for me to pick out certain topics that I felt like uh, prayerfully felt like people needed help with. And wealth and prosperity was one that kept coming up. And as you uh, have become this expert, particularly for the younger demographic on how to do that, it was so important for me to have a conversation with you. So thank you again. As you think about your own life and the things that you've transitioned to see and how you have been this advocate for wealth, how do you know for your own personal life, how do you know when it's time to make a change, when it's time to uh, go a different direction? What signs and signals often appear for you when it's time for a shift? You know, that's a good question. And uh, man, when, when I had that sign, it was time for my shift, was when I became very comfortable in the season that I was in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I became comfortable, like prior to joining Dave Ramsey's speakers group here in Nashville, Tennessee, um, I was a very well-known uh, associate pastor over the youth and young adult ministry out of Jacksonville, Florida. And I could walk into any restaurant and, and they would know me. I could walk into any school, any to the mayor's office. And, and it was just an easy uh, a thing. But um, God was like, no, this is, you're too comfortable. I, you're not stretching yourself. And, and something hit me that nothing extraordinary happens with inside of our comfort zone. And so I knew that it was time for me to shift out of that season and go into a different season, into a different dimension of life, uh, because I was just too comfortable. And where I am today, a lot of people just, they see the success, uh, but I'm, I'm in my uncomfort zone. I'm, I'm in a different culture. I'm in a different environment. I'm around millionaires and billionaires. And so every single day, I'm, I'm walking into something I'm, I'm, I'm not the pro at, mm -hmm. and I'm learning. I'm growing, mm -hmm. I am maturing, uh, but it's also expanding me as a man. So uh, before I could really get to where I am today, I had to remove myself from my comfort zone and get into uh, my uncomfort zone. That's beautiful. Um, nothing really truly happened significant in the comfort zone, right? No, nothing. Um, and I think that uh, you're, 
uh, we're both, I guess, to, to a certain degree, experts are for the millennial generation, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, and so I think that there's something significant um, that we would know, I think, a little bit more about that because of all the things that we've grappled with mm -hmm. um, in our generation, whether folks, you know, believe that we're entitled or whether folks believe that we are narcissistic. Um, but then also there is a, there's an element of stick to itness, right. That we have. And so I'm, I'm really curious to know for you, uh, about the moment when you recognize that, um, building wealth needed to be a personal priority. How would you explain that particular moment in your life and what kind of shift did it require? Did it require you to, to, to navigate into that new space? My uh, shift happened in, a, in, in probably probably uh, the lowest season of my life, which mm -hmm. I hope that your audience who are listening today uh, do not ever have to get that low before you can recognize you need to shift. Mm -hmm. um, I was 18 years old, um, off in college, um, was uh, really went to college just to join a fraternity, uh, just to be a frat brother and just to please the ladies because i had a very strong christian faith upbringing with my family you know my uh i have four parents i have two biological parents and two step parents okay. and both sides of them are very heavy into the faith our christian faith uh, both of my fathers are pastors and so there was no music there was no um, um i can't bring in r b music hip-hop music i couldn't go to dance there, there was it was go to school come home and we go to church monday through sunday mm -hmm. And so when I got off into college, I didn't, I knew about money, but I didn't know about money, especially uh, building wealth, starting a business. And so I racked up about $35,000 in debt and, and did, did, some, did some dumb things in college that unfortunately cost me my college experience and my scholarship. And when I lost my scholarship, I lost my income. And so I had to go back home to my parents, at least I thought so. And so when I get, get home, my father says, since you think you're a grown man now, go live like a grown man, you got to live with your consequences. And um, at the age of 19, you know, I'm homeless. I'm sleeping in the back of my car, uh, both sides of my family, you know, they're living in the house. They're not rich, they're not wealthy, but they have a home, they have a home, they're eating. Uh, my friends are, you know, in their particular home, but I'm in the back of my car uh, because I racked up all this debt. I made a dumb decision. And that was the season for me that I realized that I got to change my mindset when it comes to money because I was looking at having a nice car, having one of the most beautiful ladies, being able to take her out and buying her things. That was wealth. That was success. When the truth of the fact was that was all symptoms of success, but it wasn't success. And so I was like, all right, it's time to shift. And so it was in that season that I'm homeless, washing uh, in the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, asking people, can I borrow money to get something to eat that I realize I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I do not want to be the normal, typical young black man walking around here. And so I went home on that day and I said, pops, I'm not a man. I'm a young man. And I'm, I'm ready to learn how to become a grown man. Can you teach me? And my father said, yes. And he also apologized to me. He said, I apologize for not teaching you how to really build wealth and be a good steward of your finances. And so that was the season for me that I realized it's time, okay? A nice car doesn't mean that you're wealthy. A nice car mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're prosperous. Uh, you know, um, what's, what's true wealth, in my opinion, okay? Uh, what's true wealth is, are you living the life God has purposed you to live? And if you're living that life, that's, you, you have a prosperous life. Prosperity has nothing to do with just only money. Will God bless us with money? Yes. But when you're living a prosperous life, it means that you're within God's perfect will for your life. And, with, and when you're in God's perfect will for your life, you will, I believe you will have income. You will be able to live your dreams and buy what you want to buy. But it's, with, it's, it's when you're living within God's permissive will uh, that you're starting to struggle and you're not living a prosperous life. So uh, yeah. that would be my answer to that. Wow. Uh, on one of the episodes of the podcast in season one, I specifically talk about the difference between the permissive will and the perfect will of God. Come on. Yeah. Yes. And, how, and how when you think about being a good steward of your resources, mm -hmm. the things that he gives you, you have to kind of consider 
those two wills. Mm -hmm. What will I do, mm -hmm. right, with my finances and my or the income that God blesses me with mm -hmm. versus what he wants me to do with these resources? Um, and I and tell he, people, go ahead. And I tell people this all the time. And I like that. When you're within God's perfect will, you're asking him, well, God, what do you want me to do with the finances? And I used to say my finances, but really it's all God's. Everything that I have is all his. He just trusts me to manage it. And so I'm always asking God, like, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? You got your 10% because my 90% can't touch the 10% that I'm giving back to you. Um, God, I want to be a multimillionaire. So with the, the income you're blessing me with right now, tell me how to spend it so you can give me more money. And so I can give you back more money and I can build things that I want to build. I can take my lady, my woman, my wife, and my family, wherever they want to go. But right now, show me how to really compound this. I want to be within your perfect will. So the compound interest is more money. When there's I more money within God's per perfect will, you don't have more problems. <laughs> you don't. But with, when you have more money within God's permissive will, you have more problems. And so um, I love what you said about that. Like, like, God, what do you want me to do with it? But sorry to cut you off. I just no, 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 you're right. And that's so good because it's all his anyway. Yes. Uh, everything we earn is his because he gives us the, the, the energy and the strength and the, the mind to be able to earn it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, and, 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 and being a good steward, it means that you also have to understand, you know, sowing and reaping. Ooh. And, <laughs> and that, yeah, you, you can't, you know, reap what you don't sow. Oh, uh, this is your show. I'm going to be quiet. No, no come on. What, come, share, share. <laughs> you know, that, that clearly hit a, hit a button for you. It did because I think our generation, uh, we don't want to give. All mm -hmm. we want to do is just receive. It's like, we don't want to be a blessing. We just, you know, when we go into the job, all right, I get paid eight hours, give me my money, that's it. We don't want to give more. We, we don't want to, you know what, let me serve. Let me be a blessing. It's, it's, I feel as if our generation had this entitlement spirit. I am entitled to this. You, I deserve this. I mean, the truth of the fact, all of us don't deserve nothing. We're living by God's grace. And so the fact that we're living by God's grace I, I actually give over and beyond my 10%. I actually give 15% of my income, 10% tithe, 5% to my youth ministry because I have a heart for young people. Yeah. And then I give on top of that offerings. And then on top of that, um, every year I set aside a large amount of money so I can be a blessing to homeless people because I know what it feels like sleeping in my car. So every December I rent out hotel rooms in San Diego, California, where I'm from. And I find people during Christmas season and I, and, and I do that. And I think that's the main reason I'm a number one national bestselling author. Um, um, uh, I travel the world speaking. I'm connected to a lot of people that has nothing to do with why I believe I am blessed financially. Yeah. I am blessed financially because I know how to sow a seed and water that seed and keep sowing and keep watering. And God knows that he can trust me with this. And if I can trust him with this, and I can continue blessing my son a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the secret to building true wealth. It's yeah. not about going out there working 40, 50 hours. No, show God that with your $40,000 paycheck a year, mm -hmm. he can trust you with it. So he yeah. can get 140. Yeah. So you, you spoke something there. No. And, and I think what's so important to note is that when you sow, you, you're guaranteed to reap you have to trust that God will give the increase, right? Yes, yes. Instead of, you know, presuming or assuming that it's going to come back a certain kind of way, mm. you know? Mm. Um, I, too, give above the 10. Yeah. And even as an entrepreneur, years ago when I first started, I didn't know, I didn't know how to do that yet. Right. Um, and I, and a lot of the mistakes, oh my God, a lot of the mistakes that you have written about in your book, I've made them. Mm. Um, a lot of the things that you talk about in, on your, um, on your channels, 
uh, on social and things of that nature. I've made I made those mistake those mistakes so much, you know, younger and in and, and in so many different ways. And it wasn't so much that I wasn't taught. Uh, I think there was just a number of things that are just, you, you're just young and so you don't know. But I also know you said something specific about the millennial generation. And I want to, I want to challenge that just a little bit because I love to talk about the positivity of our generation and the folks who actually do it right. Like, yeah. we're, like we're talking about, but I want to kind of present the overarching idea of culture, like mm. the, the, the consumerist culture that we're in and how I think the millennial generation specifically has benefited the least from that culture, right? Mm -hmm. um, say more about your experiences. As, as a best-selling author, you, you've helped a lot of millennials transition into the real world. What assumptions do you see them making about money? And is, do you think that prosperity is a true achievable concept? for millennials? Yes, it is a true achievable concept for millennials, uh, specifically in, in every way. I, I do, I do believe that because I believe God doesn't want his children hurting, bottom line. Uh, but when we step back and look at the factual numbers for millennials today, um, and we talk about the financial end of things, um, the average millennial right around that 30 year old bracket, uh, their net worth is $10,400. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I'm seeing is we're trending more towards um, uh, we are a consumer, not a, not a saver, not an investor. We, we consume a lot. We, uh, but here's the thing, too, that's positive about our generation. We are a, a hardworking generation. We, we want to be entrepreneurs. That's a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> the bad thing is we don't want to work a job. We don't want to work eight to five. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're ready to put in the work to go start a business. But the problem with that is if you've never worked for someone, how do you know how to lead someone? That's true. So I love our mindset. Uh, but, you know, me working with Dave Ramsey has taught me so much that I would not have learned on my own. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but our generation is, is a strong generation. I believe our generation, you don't see much racism within our uh, generation. Uh, you don't see a lot of hating on each other. You say like, yo, you winning, you eating, that's good. I'm going to go over here and win and I'm going to eat too. Yeah. Uh, it's not everyone, but I'm talking about from the whole as a large. Um, you know, I support millennials. I support uh, all people, but especially people of color. If, you, if you're a black brother, I'm like, yo, I'm, let me help you out. As long right. as the customer service is good. Uh, but there's positive and negatives, but I think one of the things that I'm really fighting for us millennials is to really look at how we're spending our money. Um, and that kind of bothered me a little bit when I found that out, that yeah. my average age peers, we, we have about $10,000. That's it. So we're not investing. We don't have a Roth IRA. We don't have a 401k. Uh, we don't have a savings account, you know, but we have nice cars, nice clothes on the lady's side, beautiful hair, guy side, nice Jordans. Um, but we don't have any real money. We have the symptoms of success, but yeah. are we really experiencing true success is my question. Yeah. I've learned, I've, I've learned through being an entrepreneur and this is year, gosh, this is year 16 of entrepreneurship for me. Ooh. And I've learned, yeah, I started right out of college. And so I've learned through, through that, how to have multiple streams of income. There you go. Um, I've learned how to definitely be frugal. Yep. Uh, I, 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 I think my background career wise, I saw a lot of working in entertainment and sports. I saw a lot of, you know, fake it till you make it. Yep. <laughs> uh, and, and let's look like money, but we don't really have any money. Um, but, but I think definitely a lot of us um, come up in, you know, humble beginnings. Or, you know, like you said, you just, you have everything you need. You're not rich. You're not poor. You, you have everything you need. Right. And, and that was my experience. And I think one of the things that I've tried to pick up lately is, uh, in, in being disciplined financially mm -hmm. is investing. Um, that's something that I, 
I was just looking at um, the stock market yesterday and watching, you know, the investments that I've made and things of that nature. So how to be not only have multiple streams of income, but also how to be smart with the resources that you have. And if I can be, you mentioned something about symptoms. If, if I could look at, you know, a resume, my resume, and then I look at my bank account, I should see some similarities. There you go. There you, no, you right. You know what I mean? You like, are right. Something's not adding up here. Because <laughs> it, it's, it's, really, it's a heart thing, especially if we talk about it spiritually. How we handle our money is a heart. That's a heart issue, don't you think? No, absolutely. And you said the key word there, discipline. You know, I believe that discipline is the bridge between who we are and where we are today to who we want to become and where we want to go tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if we're saying we want to be wealthy and we want to be rich and you, you don't have self-discipline, you're not going to be wealthy and rich. You're going to look like it, but you're not going to be that. Yeah. And, and, and the Bible says where your treasure goes, that's where your heart is. Right. So if, if you are more into looking good, faking it and not making it, then that's where your money is going. Um, uh, I forgot her name. No, Raven Simone. Raven Simone came out on the interview yesterday and yeah. she said that, you know, she's the actor, the actress from Cosby. She never spent the dime of her money from the Cosby show. That was 20 years ago. 28 to be 30. Is it yeah. 30? Almost 30. Almost 30. Almost 30. Yeah. So I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So you got people out here who get their paycheck and spend it immediately. And when she was eight years old, her mom and dad, again, helping her out, said, yo, you ain't touching this. Mm -hmm. And then when she turned 18, when she left the show, I'm good. Yeah. I, I don't want to touch it. I'm a grown woman. I still don't want to touch that money. I want to let it grow. And her net worth is over $50 Phenomenal. million. Yeah. So I'm like, you got to have discipline today because that is the bridge to get you from where you are to where you want to go yeah. and, and, and having discipline is, is especially with this millennial generation. You know, I'm very big on uh, just really avoiding debt and just having an emergency fund. And just like you said, investing into my future. My thing right now is a single man, no woman, no wife, no kids. I, at the age of 35 in my single state, I'm already thinking about my legacy. That's right. I'm already thinking about what, what am I leaving my kids? I'm not trying to impress some woman. I'm like, no, I'm trying to impress my kids. I'm my mom and dad, my mom and stepdad, when they got married, uh, my mom didn't have a ring. She didn't have a wedding. Um, she didn't go on a honeymoon for I'm 35 for 32 years. They never been out of the country. When we grew up, we never took family vacations. I've never been to Disney World. We never did family like just let's just get away. And it was because they were living paycheck to paycheck. And my, they had to work to keep us afloat. And so for me, it's, it's like, all right, bet. I don't want that for my family. Right. And so I want to have the complete opposite. Whenever my wife says, hey, I want to go to Hawaii. When can we go? We can go next weekend. You, you ready? You know, we can go this weekend, as a matter of fact. You know, I want to take my kids to Israel and, and show them where Jesus Christ walked. And mm -hmm. at the age of 15, when they can comprehend it, I want to turn their Bible into real life experience. And so I think when you have discipline and when you have a vision with your discipline, you'll be able to accomplish everything, have a prosperous life and not just you, but your family and really experience true wealth. Yeah. And wealth is a lot more than just the physical part of money, yeah. but I'm a money guy. And I just, I believe that if you're just a good steward, you will be wealthy. You, yeah. you will have your bank account looking like your telephone number. You know, when you really focus on, uh, the path God has for you and have discipline and a clear vision, man, we, we, we can experience it all. I love that. And I appreciate what you said about wanting to give your future family certain experiences. And, and unfortunately, it seems that I know for, for at least, you know, our, our generation, our parents, the boomers and some older Gen Xers, um, a lot of the reason though, we experienced that as a, as a society is because of that. I want to give my children what I never had. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And so being able to balance that and you, you literally struck a chord in me when you said that because in my own prayer meditation time, I was literally just saying to God, as I attempt to establish legacy, mm. I, I want to be, I need to be able to be wealthy and prosperous so that I have something to pass down. So for me, like, you know, I got a chance to go to Disney World, a single, single parent, you know, my mom, yeah. single parent. So, but, but I still got some of the perks that, yeah. you know, came with you know, <laughs> having a two income household by the grace of God. Right. So, so I, I had things and I had experiences and, and thankfully now, even uh, in my, in my current career, in my current life and career at this particular stage, just God has blessed me tremendously. However, as I think about what children and what, uh, what motherhood and marriage could look like, I realize that it's actually a little bit more about legacy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that you mentioned giving those experiences. It's not about the material things, but about the experiences and the level of comfort, but also with that level of comfort, giving your family an opportunity to be good stewards and to give and to share in community and to, to sow into uh, your church family. And it's, it's really about the cumulative experiences. And when I think about excellence, that's one of the things I think about. But I also think about um, mediocrity. Mm. I like to define mediocrity as the enemy of excellence. Mm. From a spiritual perspective for you, what do you think keeps us from being excellent in the areas of wealth and prosperity? Man, one, I would say the lack of knowledge. And then I would say, two, people have the knowledge, but they just, they don't care. That They are fine where they are. Mm. You know, um, I won't say any names, but I know several family members of mine who know that they can go out there and get a better job, but they choose not to get a better job because the government takes care of them. Oh. You know, they government housing, they're making a hundred and they're paying $150 for their rent. You know, they're getting food stamps. So it's like, Ooh, we said it earlier. They're comfortable. Like mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, and Ooh, the spiritual side, their level of faith is not where it should be because I believe that if you're really going to experience true wealth and really going to experience a, the prosperous move that God can, can put over your life, you got to step out on faith. God is not just going to drop it in you and then you just walk. No, you, you got to step out the boat. You got to say, God, I'm, I'm coming to you. God, I'm going to take the first step. Um, as long as you know you're within God's perfect will, it's like they lack faith. Mm. True story. I came here. Uh, predominantly 99% African-American church. I'm traveling the world, speaking for Bishop T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Bishop Bay alone back in the days. I'm, I'm doing a lot of great stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have this um, very sharp, conservative uh, white guy named Dave Ramsey says, hey, I want you to come work with me. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, that's night and day from what I'm used to. But he and I was aligned spiritually and with our core message. And I'm like, God, that is so different. And God said, go. And I was like, I'm going to leave everything that I know. But my level of faith was the reason why I went. Because say, God, I'm going to trust you. And because of that move, that was the best move I've ever made in my life. Because my faith was bigger than what I could physically see. And so when I followed God, my calling, uh, my purpose, Man, working with Dave Ramsey has been the best thing ever for me. And, I, and it's the reason why I have the wealth uh, that I have now. And I'm building the wealth that I'm building uh, because I didn't lack faith. And so there's nothing wrong with having uh, a small faith because the Bible says just have mustard seed of faith. But my thing is I'm always stretching my faith. All right, I, I'm a grower. I want to plant a big seed of faith because I want a big return. And so I think when we can do that, that's one reason people are lacking wealth. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a prosperous life because their level of faith is not as big as what they, they want to want in return. That's beautiful. I love that faith. And with that faith, you mentioned um, stepping out mm -hmm. and doing what God 
was calling you and telling you and nudging you to do. You can't complete the faith without obedience. Ooh. Right? Nope, nope, nope. nope. Like you, you, could, you, you could believe that God wanted these things and he wants us to be wealthy. He wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to have resources to share. But it, like we said earlier about being a good steward, if you're not obedient to, with what you have, if you're not obedient to where he's leading you and guiding you, you can't get there. But faith is obedient. So it is when you really look at it, faith without obedience is like faith without works, in my opinion. That's it's right. Like it, it just doesn't happen because you're going to be obedient if you give God 10 percent and you're also having faith at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to be obedient if you're if you're changing your whole career around and God is saying, I'm calling you to this. But that's also faith. So faith and obedience is in the same thing. Um, you can't say, well, I'm having faith and I'm going to move to Africa when God told you to not move. Well, I'm going to have faith that I'm going to succeed in Africa. Well, that's not faith. That's just called being stubborn and selfish. And uh, foolish. And foolishness. I, I didn't want to say that on your show. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know, but it's like, but, but if God says, you know what, Ariel, I want you to transition over here. And you say, well, God, I want to transition over there. So I'm going to have faith that you're going to follow me. No, he, that's, that's not yeah. faith because that's not obedience. Yeah. So uh, faith and obedience work hand in hand. Yeah, you're right. You, you, we, you talked a little bit about, you know, the desire. We talked about the desire perhaps for certain people to pursue wealth and prosperity and how do we do that with excellence? Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be able to have faith, but with that, and we also have to be able to be wise. If we think about Solomon, right? Yep. He asked for wisdom. And as a result, God gave him wealth. Yep. yep. And there's so much uncertainty about the financial security and well being of us all um, due to the global pandemic. What do you say to the person who is trying to maintain excellence right now? Uh, specifically in their finances, in the midst of everything that's going on and what looks to be an economic downturn. How do you, what do you say to someone who's really trying to be as excellent as they can uh, with their finances right now? I love what you just said. Be like Solomon. Ask for wisdom and knowledge. Okay. Don't, uh, don't ask God for more money. Uh, ask God, okay, God, give me wisdom and knowledge so that I, so that I can be a good steward with the resources that I have. So that's on the spiritual side. Uh, because following the story, you know, he, he gave them not just wisdom and knowledge, but he also gave them land, fame. Uh, he gave them money. He gave them the respect and everything that he, he needed. Because at first he said, God, I want to be a good steward, steward over the people that you gave me. So it's the same thing with our finances. You know, if you want to be excellent, uh, keep God first. All right, God, I want to be excellent with your money. Then on the practical side, if you're trying to be excellent, here's the thing. There's, there's, there's four things that are really focusing on. So let's say if your check is low if, or if you're not getting a full check, I want you to focus on the four walls. Okay. This is, this is where it becomes being a good steward. Focus on your, you know, your shelter, uh, your mortgage or your rent payment. Focus on getting food in the table. Focus on your utilities and focus on your transportation. Don't worry about nothing else right now. You know, I want you to focus on living and providing for your family if you have one. Uh, but if you still have income coming in, right now is a great time. Uh, to pay off all your debt. From a spiritual perspective, debt is not a sin, but I've never seen. I've read the whole Bible a hundred times, especially in seminary school. I've never seen God talk positive about debt. He's always said that his people are slave to the lenders. So we're slave to Wells Fargo. We're slave to Capital One if we are borrowing money. And so my perspective on that is pay off all your debt and avoid debt. And especially if you have student loans right now, Man, pay them off right now. Be smart because if you have no interest, why not be a good steward and pay that off so you now can start putting money towards a 401k, a Roth IRA, or a SEP if you're a uh, small business owner. Um, start bringing in money so you can start building a legacy because what, I, what, what my biggest fear is with this gener generation is that we have all this wisdom, we have all this knowledge, we work hard. But when we go to our time to transition to heaven, what are we leaving our families with? Are we leaving them with 
with with peace, with joy, with wealth? Or are we leaving them with like oh, with stress? Oh my gosh, dad didn't pay this, mom didn't do this. Man, I I gotta pay to bury my mom. I gotta pay to bury my dad. And so remember that the decisions we made today will impact our tomorrow, and the caliber of our future will be determined by the choices we make right now. You know, sacrifice a Gucci bag so one day you can start a company that can be bigger than Gucci. That's right. You know, so um, um, that's my thoughts. Yeah, I, I, like I love it. it. I love it. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, we actually have a beautiful sunny day today in Nashville. Um, and we've had a lot of uh, rain and, and things of that nature. Um, and I know majority of us right now, uh, at the time of us recording this, our quarantine, as you try to navigate this season of life, um, what words of affirmation help you continue to pursue excellence? Man, um, joy, uh, peace, vision, um, and really more so like, I won't say affirmation words, but like vision. I, I, keep, I keep hearing vision throughout this quarantine season uh, because I study, I'm always studying people. And uh, I've learned that in a time of crisis are when millionaires are born. But they use this time to sit down and to, to just cast vision and to just dream and to study and how to make it. And when things turned around, uh, uh, this is when things just happen. And so I believe that right now, out of this season, uh, we're gonna have a lot of mil uh, millennials who are, who are gonna be future millionaires, business owners, because they use this time to grow their mind and to really sit down and to just dream and see what is inside of them that God gave them that they can mm -hmm. birth during this season and they'll be successful. And so during this time, I, I'm just, I'm sitting back, I'm writing, I'm in my office uh, every day and I'm, I'm emailing my team and, and Skyping with my team, right? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'm, I'm casting vision that God has given me. So it's not really words of affirmation, but like, um, I just want to affirm in you listening right now. There's something inside of you that you haven't birthed yet that if you sit still and ask God how to birth it, uh, when you birth it, it will not only impact your life, but it will impact the world. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Anthony, for joining us. I'm really grateful for your time and for the ministry that you've built and the resources that you have and the resources that you share and how you pour into so many people. Um, share your socials so people can follow you. Yeah, you can uh, connect with me on IG and YouTube. IG is at Anthony O'Neill um, on YouTube. Just type in Anthony O'Neill. Uh, just launched a brand new show that's just booming right now. Um, and we have a lot of big time celebrity guests coming up here in the next couple of weeks. And so I would love for you to uh, join me on, uh, on there. But IG, I'm just dropping content every single day on how, how do we get out of debt and how do we secure a bag and start businesses. So uh, follow me there at Anthony O'Neill. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, feel free to um, go back and listen to um, old episodes from season one, more to come with uh, season two with the Seasons and Shift series. And thank you for joining.